What is the best thing about Smiling Friends? Is it the natural witty dialogue? Is it the hilariously designed characters? Or the blending of different animation styles? Well, it's hard to say, but today I want to talk about something which often gets swept under the rug in animation, and that is some sweet, sweet background art. A couple weeks back, I made a video talking about Netflix's new animation, Farzar, and how ugly it looks. And the backgrounds are so flat, so lifeless, there's like no shading, no different angles. It looks like stock backgrounds, but Smiling Friends is the opposite of this. In just one season, they've managed to create one of the most unique looking animations in years. I could spend hours and hours just finding new stuff and listing every little detail in the background art and why it looks so good. But instead, I'll spend 8-10 to 10 minutes. Let's go! Now what I love so much about animation is, it's an art form where really, the only limit is your imagination. For live action, you're kind of bound by a set which fits in with your budget, and you have to work around real world physics or it looks a bit… off. But with animation, you can draw whatever you want. And for a wacky comedy where there's just so many kooky crazy characters, Smiling Friends manages to pack so much life into its background art. Now an important part of your background art are the characters. These are the people that are inhabiting the world you've created. And in Smiling Friends, no two background characters look or feel the same. Yeah, some are human and some are... To be honest, I don't really know what they are, and that's the point. You're constantly seeing crazily designed, goofy characters in the background, but for the most part, they're just going about their everyday lives, doing normal everyday things. In the episode where Pim and Charlie are trying to cheer up Mr. Shrimp Man, they're strolling through the gym, and all the background characters are just working out to the max. You know, they're getting their pump on, they're getting sweaty and wet and wild, they're interacting with the environment. They're only at this gym for like one minute, but you get such a great idea of what this gym is like, just from the background art. And it wouldn't be right to make this video without shouting out Gene Rack Man. I have no idea what this guy's deal is. Who is this man? What's his story? Is he okay? Why is he blue? See all these questions that I'm asking just from one little two second background gag. During the episode where the smiling friends are trying to cheer up disgraced actor Mr. Frog, they take him to a book signing to meet his fans. How wholesome. When the focus is on Mip and Charlie and their backs are turned. Just off frame, Mr. Frog is seen doing a huge line of something or other. And then when it zooms back out, he's got all this purple shit under his nose like a dirty little fiend. It's quite a subtle moment that you might miss on your first viewing, but it helps to explain what he does next. Oh, can I get a selfie with you, Mr. Frog? <laughs> hey, no, 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 oh. hey, hey. Later on, Mip and Charlie are chatting away while Mr. Frog is going all Rambo on some targets. And then it cuts away to just Pim and Charlie. Now, they could have saved some time and just had the shots be heard in the background, but they show the shots hitting the sandbank behind the targets and the dust clouds getting kicked up. And he misses every single shot because he's a little fucked up. Animation always feels more immersive when the characters interact with their environment. Another really subtle choice that Smiling Friends makes is making its characters feel vulnerable. Not in terms of emotion, but in terms of they could get hurt or killed at any moment. In a lot of animation, characters can take an insane amount of damage and then by the next episode they're fine or they just get back up and carry on fighting. Which can work if done well and depending on the style. But in Smiling Friends, characters just die all the time or get chunks taken out of them. It's crazy. Which brings me to another great running gag, which is all the random dead bodies just in the background of shots. Half the time I don't even notice them. I'm like, is that a dead guy? Is that a dead guy over there? Might be. It just adds so much more mystery. Like, who is this guy? Why is he dead? How did he die? Why is no one saying anything? How come no one's noticed that this guy's soul has been shucked straight out of him? Like, what is going on? Now this one's a bit less subtle, but the way this guy's head gets stamped into spaghetti and Pim and Charlie just don't say anything is so gold. And then later on when Pim leaves the apartment, his head can still be seen getting stamped on outside the door. It's not even part of the scene or the story, it's just, oh yeah, there's a guy getting his head stoomped out. And without any dialogue, it tells us that this guy that they're going to see lives in a pretty rough area of town. Now let's talk about scale quick. When you have a giant character in your series or your movie, it's important to remember scale. A giant monster is cool, who doesn't love a huge boy? But if there isn't something else that's familiar to a person in the shot to compare it to, then there's no way of telling how big a character or object is. For example, look at this dinosaur in the desert and tell me how big it is. Pretty difficult, right? Now if I add a little dude in there, you now instantly get an idea of how big this dinosaur is. So when Charlie is talking to the devil who is a massive bloke, it would be easy to forget he is as big as he is if it weren't for this huge laundry basket and cans behind him. Also, the establishing shot shows both of them together, making Charlie look like a whittle old fella. 
When we switch back to the devil's perspective, looking down on Charlie, the true massiveness of the props is revealed, as Charlie is in the centre of them. If he weren't shown in this shot, then all of these items would just look normal sized, but because we've had a whole season prior of getting to know Charlie's size compared to other characters, it makes us realise how truly big this Satan man is. So going back to a show which I think has very little creativity, especially in terms of its background art, Netflix's Fars are, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little kooky crazy experiment to compare the background art of both Smiling Friends and this show. Combining two things which just everyone loves, awful animation and maths, I'm going to pick two episodes from both Smiling Friends and Farzar and see how many different backgrounds there are. And this includes different angles of the same background. Basically, if you have to draw it differently, then I'm going to include it. And to be fair, I'll be using a random wheel. Ooh, exciting. I feel like this video is just turning into another Farzar hate video. Okay, so for Smiling Friends, we have the pilot and the enchanted forest. So let's see what we get for Farzar. Oh god, I really don't want to watch Farsa. <laughs> this video better get a million views for the experience I'm about to go through, Jesus. Okay, so for Farsa, we have episode 5 and episode 10. Now it's time to compare. Jesus Christ. This is so much more worse than I thought it was going to be. This episode's literally about shit people. Literal shit people. Round 1. So in the Smiling Friends pilot, we have a total of 63 unique background drawings in the space of 11 minutes, which works out to about 5.7 backgrounds per minute. Look at how many different perspectives we get of Desmond's room alone. I mean, they only spend about a minute in there. They could have easily let the scene play out with a simple shot of them all standing in the room and then zoom in on the characters when they're talking. But no, they really go the extra mile. And in episode 5 of Farzar, we have about 60 different background drawings across 25 minutes. I should be taking off at least 10 for this abomination of a scene. I need an abortion! Uh, do you want to go with original or extra crispy? I don't care, just kill it! Oh shit, it's armed! Yeah. Oh, this is coming out of your tip! Actually, I think it's coming out of yours. Ah, I knew it was risky to pop back up, but it was worth it for that zinger. Now this works out to about 2.4 backgrounds per minute. I don't think in this whole episode or show you ever see any of these characters from a different angle. It's just front view with the character slightly off center. Next up for Smiling Friends is episode 6 where Pim and Charlie run off into the enchanted forest to cheer up a princess. And we get a total of 54 unique background shots across a runtime of 10 minutes. Which works out to about 5.4 backgrounds per minute. So, there's a few less than the pilot, but the backgrounds in this episode, in particular the throne room and the enchanted forest, hold so much detail and look like they took bloody ages to draw. And finally, we have the grand finale of Farzar, the sweaty climax, and we have 60 backgrounds in 27 minutes. This works out to about 2.2 backgrounds per minute, and they are all awful. So yeah, if you compare all these numbers, you can get a real good idea of just how much effort Smiling Friends puts into its background art. Maybe it's the shorter episodes or the fact that there's only 9 as of recording this video, but Smiling Friends has shown that you don't always have to go the traditional 20 minute, 20 episode per season adult comedy route. The creators understood what budget they had and didn't try and stretch it out more than they could, instead creating 100 minutes of what is in my opinion the best animated comedy in years. I could pick a frame from any Smiling Friends episode and you'd know what it is just from the background and colours alone. The term short but sweet comes to mind when I think about this show. I'd rather have amazing character design and amazing background art for 10 minutes than mediocre animation for 20 minutes. Audi. Thank you so much for watching till this part in the video. Um, I'm about two months into YouTube now. I hit 100 subscribers. Whoa. So thank you to anyone who subscribed, comment, like, all of that jazz. Um, I'm still figuring out what kind of content I want to be making, but I'm leaning towards animation and... Uh, you know, film, television, because that's what I'm most interested in. But it won't be strictly that. I feel like I'm never going to, you know, confine myself to one genre. So if I see something and I think I can make an interesting video out of it, and it's not animation or Netflix or anything like that, then I'll fully go for it. So yeah, if you want to come along for the journey, then hit the bell and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. I love you. Goodbye.